Guten Tag, meine Freunde. No, I'm not in Germany this time, but I am in a place where German is the, uh, the local language. I am in Vienna, Austria, uh, which is one of only, Austria being one of only three major European countries where German is the majority language, the other two being Switzerland and obviously Germany. Uh, I am in Stadtpark, which I believe is simply state park in English in um, central Vienna, close to uh, close to downtown, a little bit east of the city center, I guess. Rather nice little park. I've only been here in Vienna for about a day. Um, and it's a little bit like St. Petersburg. I was advised to come here by some of my Russian comrades because they told me that Vienna is sort of the closest thing that, uh, that Europe has to a um, to a St. Petersburg, a, a quiet little city full of culture that values uh, culture almost as much as it values business, which I don't think is really the case in Germany, unfortunately. Um, and I can say that certainly the, the layout of the city seems more like St. Petersburg than uh, other parts of Europe that I've seen, although mostly I've just seen Finland. Uh, but it has the same sort of tall, stately buildings and the same sort of pervading sense of, uh, shall we say, uh, aspirations to greatness that uh, that I guess is fairly common in Central Europe, as opposed to uh, aspirations to, I'm not sure what they have in uh, other parts of Europe. There's a nice little pond over there with some kind of water fowl swimming on it. And here is a, a statue, or a, I guess it's not really a complete statue, just a bust of some person, presumably of some repute. Uh, it appears to be uh, I'm not sure what the person's name is supposed to be. Is it De, De Andreas Zelinka? I don't know. That's his name. I'm not sure who it is. Oh, I guess. Uh, oh, it says his title below. Uh, Bürgermeister aus der Stadt Wien. Okay, so he was. I guess he was the. Uh, I guess he was the mayor of Vienna for the period from 1861 to 1868. And that sound is, I guess, what an ambulance sounds like in Vienna. There's an ambulance going there down the street. So, other than uh, other than the general architecture, first impressions of Vienna, it has a very good public transit system. The streets are almost insanely empty of traffic. I'm here, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, which is, you know, I guess the morning rush hour has passed by now, but there is very, very little traffic here on the streets considering I'm close to downtown. It's incredible. Vienna is reputed to have one of the best public transit systems in Europe, and uh, I guess it must be really good because people don't seem to drive that much. Um, it's also not a city very well outfitted for people who want to drink as they walk around because I'm kind of thirsty and I'm trying to find a place that might have uh, a uh, some kind of a little stand or a convenience store or something where they might sell something to drink, even just water would be nice, but uh, I didn't find one on my walk over here. I walked here from the train station and uh, didn't see any. Well, I saw one, but it was closed. I'm not sure why it would be closed at 10 a.m. Maybe there are not enough people walking around to justify their business. So yeah, I'm here in Vienna, and hopefully I'll have more to see and talk about here in Austria's cultural and business center. Hey everyone, not too far from where I just was is the Mozart House, which uh, oddly enough translates as Mozart's House. And I guess this is the house where, uh, I'm not sure if it's where Mozart was born or just where he used to live for a while, but it's, uh, it's here. The address is simply building number five, Dom Gaz. Dom Gaz. I love the, the font on these signs, that old-fashioned Gothic font. It makes them look so old and stately, even though the signs themselves are probably new. They were probably put up not too long ago and just made to look that way, but still looks pretty cool. And I'm on this narrow little street here, which I believe is a pedestrian zone. I don't think cars are allowed here. And uh, here's some building. I'm not sure what it is. Well, the sign probably tells you what it is, but I can't read it because it's in German, which I do not understand. Oh, and I guess this is a hotel, judging by the word hotel at the top. And here's some other kind of store that sells something. I'm not sure what. But what I really wanted to show you 
is this building here, this uh, 777 Bücher. Um, it appears to be a bookstore. I'm not sure if that word at the top, Buchhandlung, I'm not sure if that means bookstore, but I'm going to guess it does. It looks like a pretty good bookstore, just looking inside, I mean, just looking at the, the books inside there, it just looks like a pretty sumptuous little bookstore full of culture. And it's also not open, I'm pretty sure. It actually doesn't have hours. Oh yes, yes it does, it does have hours posted. These are the hours. And actually, I think the problem is it's Sunday. I think a lot of things around here are closed on Sunday. That's probably my problem. Because this should be open at 10 on all other days. And it is past 10 in the morning now. So it should be open today, except I guess it's closed on Sunday. But you can still read the sign that tells you about here in the Buchhandlung. That's nice. Looks like a pretty good bookstore. Nice. Okay, and just steps away from that Mozart house, which is in that direction, I just want to show off this, uh, this building that's the, I guess according to the sign, it's the Austrian Journalists Club. I just love the, um, the appearance of this entry courtyard. When you walk inside, there's this awesome little indoor courtyard that's like uh, something you just don't see very much in North American buildings. You basically walk in and there's still this sort of, it feels like a cobblestone street, except I guess it's inside. I assume there's... There seems to be daylight coming in from the... Actually, hold on, let me see if I can... I guess it's public property. It's not a crime to walk in here. Is the ceiling here a skylight or... Oh no, it's actually not covered. Okay, it's actually an open ceiling, so it is like a little inner courtyard. I thought that was kind of cool. I wanted to show that off. And this is, again, is the street to the Mozart house over there. Probably the first time in my life I've ever seen Greek graffiti. I don't even see it in Russia, which is funny because the Russian uh, Cyrillic alphabet is mostly derived from the Greek alphabet, or at least largely so. Um, I'm not sure what this says, but I'm pretty sure it's Greek. Another nice little bookstore. You folks know me, I love bookstores. I guess Buchhandlung really must mean bookstore, since this appears to be called Le, Le Porello, the bookstore. That's some nice books. Um, these appear to be travel books. And this is the front entrance. This store is also closed because it is Sunday. The sign appears to advertise Buch und mehr, which I am assuming means books and more. I'm not sure what the and more is. Presumably they sell something other than books, although I don't see anything other than books in the windows. Oh, there's a little little sign up there with their uh, with their web address on it. .at, of course, being the internet top-level domain for Austria. Here they have some more books on display in their windows. Very nice. That uh, I don't speak German, but I'm going to assume that that Philosophische Bibliothek probably means philosophical library, or something like that. That appears to be uh, Schopenhauer, if I'm not mistaken. And... I have no idea what these bells are about. I have no idea what's up with the bells, but based on context, given that it is about 10.45 or so in the morning, I'm going to guess that they're probably bells calling people to church or something like that. I don't think it's from this church though, but this is obviously quite a tall church spire here. Actually, let me go ahead and check that out because I think that's another landmark. Yeah, I was right. This is another major landmark in downtown Vienna. This is um, St. Stephen's, uh, what is it, St. Stephen's Cathedral or Basilica or something like that. Uh, the address is simply, number one, Stephen's Platz. 
pretty easy to remember, I guess, as long as you can remember the name Stephen. Um, so yeah, this is one of the major cathedral church type buildings in Vienna. Very stately. And yeah, it's just uh, it's just like just down this little alleyway from that bookstore I was just at. So very cool. I'm not sure what those bells were all about. I don't think they were coming from this building. I think they were coming from a building off in that direction. There's another one of those awesome Gothic language signs or Gothic script signs. By the way, I figured what the I Stadt at the top is supposed to be. That's short for Innerstadt, which simply means inner city, referring to the uh, to the central core of Vienna. So the Innerstadt or Eichstadt district is just the central downtown core of Vienna. I have to confess I have no idea what this sign is supposed to be prohibiting. Uh, the only thing I can guess is that it, it looks almost like it's prohibiting pedestrian traffic, but I am quite certain that pedestrian traffic is not prohibited here. So I don't know what else it might be indicating that you're not supposed to do. Is it supposed to mean that men and women shouldn't walk together? or something, I, I really have no idea. If anyone can guess or if anyone knows, uh, let me know because I'm, I'm quite confused. Okay, I have to confess I'm a little confused by this building as well. The uh, Bucherer text there leads me to suspect that this is another bookstore, but in the windows all I see are jewelry. And uh, actually, over that door there, it obviously says Rolex, which I believe is a jewelry company. So I'm not sure. I don't think this is actually a bookstore. Maybe Bucherer means something else. I'm also not sure what mostly Mozart is. I guess we could go and find out. Continuing the book theme, there's a uh, Reader's Digest logo up there. I'm not sure. I rather doubt that this is their world headquarters. It's probably just their... Austrian headquarters or something like that, but it's kind of funny to see their logo there. Sorry for the bells. I have no idea what's up with the bells, but there are a lot of them. Actually, I'm pretty sure that the bell that's ringing is the one in that tower there. If you look through the slats, you can kind of see the bell swaying back and forth a little bit. So that tower there, I believe, is the source of the bell ringing. I will not follow the bell ringing. I don't know what it's ringing for, but it does not toll for me. Here's another shot of St. Stephen's Cathedral from the other side and a bit farther away. Nice uh, sort of tile work or whatever that is on that, uh, on that roof there. Okay, another significant church. This church building at the end of the street here is called P Peterskirch or something like that. So I'm assuming it's named after St. Peter. Probably not Peter the Great, who St. Petersburg is named after. It's there at the west side, uh, at the west end of this street, which is uh, Gold, Goldschmeidig. Uh, oh. Gold, Goldschmeidgas. Yes. I actually came down the street because I was hoping to get some pizza, but of course this pizza place is closed. Yeah, it figures. One thing I've also seen a lot of around here is horse-drawn carriages. You see quite a lot of them wandering around the, uh, the streets. I guess you can rent a ride on one of them, and it seems that they're based here, uh, just to the uh, just a little to the left of the main entrance to St. Stephen's Cathedral. I believe that archway there is where you go into St. Stephen's Cathedral, and if you walk just a bit left from there, you end up here with all these horses, and I guess you can get a ride in one of these carriages. Okay, I'm starting to get the idea that I could probably burn up a ridiculous amount of film if I stop to film every bookstore that I pass here in Vienna, so maybe I won't stop to film all of them. But uh, here's another one. It's Franz Leo and Company. Uh, they have some nice books on display as usual. They're also closed today because it's Sunday once again. Oh, there go some horses. Okay, back to the books. Oh, hey, it's a, a Lego Star Wars calendar. That's pretty cool. And what else do we have here? I don't know, I can't tell what a lot of this stuff is. Oh, hey, Moomins. A Finnish innovation makes an appearance in uh, Austria. And other stuff. 
and things. I guess uh, I'm gonna guess that Japan is probably Japan in German. Unless actually the title's probably in English. Oh well. The Ringstars. Okay. The Ring Street. Not sure. Okay. That's enough. Oh wait, no, it's not. There's one more. Oh. Canadian National Railways across Canada. What is this about? I don't know what this is, but it costs 30 euros, so it must must be it better be good for that price. Alright, I think that's enough. That's all the books on display in the window here anyhow. Okay, I don't think this area is any kind of landmark or anything like that, but I just wanted to film this little uh it's just a nice little cul-de-sac here. Some, uh, you know, I mean, the street ends here. I guess technically you could drive over that curb onto the street if you wanted to, if there weren't cars parked there. But it's just a nice little, uh, nice little quiet side street, the kind of thing that you don't see too much in uh, North America, or at least not this nicely decorated, usually. I must confess that I find this sticker rather hilarious. Somebody put up a sticker of some guy who was ecstatic to be voting. I'm not sure why. Okay, I might just be answering my own question. Here's the inverse of that sign that I was talking about before. Remember before I shot that sign with this same picture except crossed out? Well, I'm here next to a park. And so I'm guessing that what the sign is probably permitting is, well, not what that dog's doing, I don't think. But um, I'm assuming that it probably means that you can stand around here because it's a park. So I'm going to guess that the other sign with that thing crossed out, with that picture crossed out, meant no loitering. So I guess the point is that it's okay to loiter here because it's a park, but in that uh, little side street that I was on before, it's forbidden to just stand around. That's, that's my guess as to what it's supposed to say because I really don't know what Ausgenomen is supposed to be. I'm gonna guess that's probably what it means. It's a pretty small park actually, but it's kind of nice. I wonder if somebody owns that dog, because that dog appears to have no no visible owner anywhere around. Maybe it's a stray. I kind of doubt it. Oh, actually, it probably belongs to that person who's walking there. Okay, never mind. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, seriously, how awesome is this now? Pickwick's, it's a cafe and a bar and a bookstore and a video store, all in one. So, you know, you can go in, here. here's their menu, you can order, you know, food and drinks, it's a cafe. But inside they also have books for sale. If you look inside, you can see there are lots of bookshelves. It's kind of hard to see because the light outside is kind of reflecting, but it's, it's a bookstore with a bar and a cafe in it. Actually, I guess it's not that unusual, it's just kind of, I don't know, usually, I don't know. It seems different. I guess technically it's not that different from a Borders or a Barnes & Noble, which often has a cafe in it, but it just seems kind of awesome. Here are some of the movies that they have for sale, I guess. Oh, they have Ben & Jerry's. It's pretty awesome. I see a lot of Coca-Cola here. I have yet, you know, I have yet to see a Pepsi anywhere, <clears throat> anywhere in Vienna. I don't see Pepsi here. I just see Coca-Cola in terms of soft drinks, and sometimes Sprite. Another bookstore, something called Ebuch, with text that says, Suchen Sie die Blauen Punkt, which I believe means look for the blue spot, which makes sense because their logo is a blue spot. Okay, folks, I'm sorry. I know I'm probably getting a little one-tracked at this point, but I, I just had to, to catch this one. Check this out. This bookstore is called Shakespeare and Company. Um, now, you might recognize the name. I don't believe that this store has any affiliation with the famous bookstore of the same name in Paris. Somebody please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that they just stole the name. Uh, Shakespeare and Company is, of course, a very famous bookstore. It's probably one of the most famous, most famous bookstores in the world, located in Paris. Um, I don't think it's a chain. I think this is just a single store that happened to use the same name. But still, 
they specialize in English language books, which is pretty cool. The address there is number two, Sterngaz. And uh, if I go ahead and catch a look at the, uh, the titles in the window, it appears that they do in fact specialize in uh, English language books, which is a little unusual here since most bookstores here sell predominantly German language books. Here's another Moomin book. Apparently Moomin are pretty popular here in, uh, in, uh, in Central Europe. But yeah, I see things like, um, let's see, how many of these do I actually recognize? There's a book, there's a book by Richard Dawkins. There's the, uh, the Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir. Actually, that, I'm pretty sure that was originally written in French, but it's obviously the English translation. So yeah, Shakespeare and Company. In, uh, oh hey, let me catch the sign up there as well. Shakespeare and Company booksellers. Once again at uh, number zwei Sterngas. I'm pretty stoked about this, folks. Honestly, it's. Uh, I don't think I've ever been in a place with this many bookstores. I've been walking around here in downtown Vienna now for about three hours, and I have seen more bookstores in three hours than I would see walking around St. Petersburg all day. I thought that Petersburg had a lot of bookstores in it, and it, it does by North American standards, but holy smokes, all these small little independent bookstores around here in, in Vienna, it's, it's amazing. I, I want to live here. Seriously, I'm, I'm considering moving here now. It's pretty awesome. Oh, yes, that's the first police vehicle I've seen. Police. And there's a sign, once again, indicating this is the Sterngas Street in the Innerstadt district of Vienna. Awesome. I'm liking it here. I, I really like the feel of the city. I can't believe there are this many bookstores here. I'll probably try to cut down on the bookstores and not spend too much time on any remaining bookstores that I find, but I, I just had to I just had to capture this one. I mean, look at that. He looks so he looks so pleased to be photographed, except well, it's not a photograph, it's a painting. And it probably wasn't a live painting of Shakespeare, but still. Okay, I wanted to capture this. This is just a parking garage, it's nothing special, but I just love the, the slogan that this parking company attaches to their logo. Check this out. It's Apcoa, the world of parking. These guys take their parking seriously. I mean, in any other place that I've ever been to a parking garage, you know, parking is seen as a fairly utilitarian function. You go and you park your car, but this is the world of parking. It's, a, it's an exciting, brave new world, folks. And yeah, since I haven't mentioned it yet, you can go ahead and you English speakers can make your silly jokes about Einfahrt and Ausfahrt. Go ahead, have your giggles. Yes, you know you want to. There it is again. The world of parking. Amid the usual trashy graffiti, we find a message of inspiration. Another nice cathedral. I don't even know what this one's called at this point. I'm so lost right now. Here's a nice little view to a, uh, a plaza down there where they're selling, I think they're selling Christmas trees. And another little plaza. This little pedestrian zone beyond there. I like the, uh, the facade, the architecture on the facade of this building here. It's pretty cool. I have to admit I find this sign pretty funny. I'm pretty sure that the sign just says that dogs are forbidden in this, uh, in the playground. Uh, it doesn't say anything about dogs pooping, but the picture very specifically forbids dogs from pooping, uh, which is a slightly different message from what the text provides. The sign says, Hotel de France. But it is clearly not in Le France. How is this possible? Obviously these Europeans have got their teleportation technology down to the point where they can teleport a hotel from France to Austria. And I guess just leave it there. 
folks, this building is the, uh, the main building of the University of Vienna, which is, uh, as those banners indicate, is Universität Wien in uh, German. Vienna is the German name for Vienna. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm here in Vienna is because I'm seriously evaluating the possibility of attending this university. Uh, it is one of the, it has one of the premier uh, philosophy programs in the world, um, especially if you exclude, uh, it's probably not as prestigious, it's, it's certainly not as prestigious as a program from, say, Germany or uh, especially a place like England or, you know, an Ivy League American university. But if you exclude those big countries, like, the, you know, exclude the United States, England and um, Germany, this is probably in the top ten uh, philosophy programs in the world. It's probably not, it, it would probably also be viewed out by places like La Sorbonne in Paris, or uh, places like that, but I just mean overall, this is probably among the top ten universities in uh, in mainland Europe. It's uh, it's certainly by far the most prestigious and largest university in Austria. And yeah, I've been thinking of attending here, so I'm going to go in and check it out. I'm probably not going to go in today because it's Sunday and there's probably not much going on, and I might not film anything inside because, you know, it's just boring university stuff inside, but I just thought I'd take a moment to behold the Universitat Vienne. Another cathedral with the uh, Vienna Christkindl Market taking place outside of it. This park, by the way, where I just filmed that cathedral is uh, Rathaus Park. So yeah, this is Rathaus Park on the, uh, the west side of downtown Vienna. And here, just south of uh, Rathaus Park, which by the way at the south end features a bust of uh, Dr. Karl Renner. Anyway, so just south of Rathaus Park is this structure, which I believe to be the Parliament Building. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the Parliament Building, at least that's what my map said. And quite a stately Parliament Building it is. Here's a better shot of the Parliament Building from the front. And yes, that sign there does seem to confirm its status as the Parliament Building. It's been a while since I've seen Russian lettering, uh, or, well, technically Cyrillic lettering, but I, the Russian language. That big yellow word is excursi in, excursi in Russian, which just means excursion, which means like a, a trip, a, a journey. Uh, I guess this is a, uh, it's got a, uh, a European Union play. Actually, that's a Czech, yeah, that's CZ or CZ indicates it's a Czech Republic uh, vehicle, but it's it's a European it's a Czech vehicle, I guess offering uh, Russian language tours. I'm pretty sure it's Russian because I don't think the Czech language is written in Cyrillic. I don't speak Czech, but I'm pretty sure it's written using Latin letters and not Cyrillic. Here's an impressive looking building. Uh, I'm guessing by that sign on the door that this is the Volks Theater. The Volks Theater looks pretty nice. Pretty, uh, pretty cool looking theater building. And uh, right here next to me is a statue of Ferdinand uh, Raimund. I'm not sure who that is. He also appears to have, uh, I guess that's an angel washing over him. It's 
probably a writer, I'm just guessing that by the fact that he appears to be holding a manuscript or something in his hands. This is a mailbox. That logo there is the, the logo of the post office. I'm not sure if that's the logo of the Austrian post office or just the uh, Viennese post office, but anyway. I just wanted to film this because it has this sticker. I really don't know what lookism is, but any sticker that has a Space Invader on it is pretty cool if you ask me. Okay, I appear to have wandered outside of the officially sanctioned Innerstadt region of Vienna because I'm starting to see more stuff like this, more of these kind of anarchist punk sort of things. Uh, You don't even have to really speak German to understand those three anti-words, anti-fascism, anti-capitalism, anti-sexism. So yeah, this is kind of the, I guess this counts as the rough part of town. I know it's juvenile, but okay, let's go ahead and say it, yes, gut fart. Um, yeah, I'll just go ahead and let this graffiti speak for itself. Why is it, I wonder, that wherever you go, the signs for sex shops are always in English? I wonder what that says. This appears to be the, uh, the sex shop in question. Uh, I can figure out what most of these things say. I'm not sure what Puppin is. Um, I'd also really like to know what Gummyware is. Then again, maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I don't want to know what gummy wear is. Maybe some things are better just not known. Maybe it's the same thing with Puppin. Okay, I'm actually not sure what this place is. Uh, it appears to be some sort of uh, machine shop or tool shop, but uh, I just couldn't resist stopping to catch any place that has the art of Japanese sword polishing in its window. Ladies and gentlemen, this building, the uh in Vienne, this is the uh, the central branch of the Vienna Public Library. Up there you can sort of see it. That I believe is the logo, that B, that blue letter B, I believe that's the logo of the library system. And yeah, this pyramid kind of structure appears to be the library. It also appears to have a cafe and restaurant at the top. And for easy access, in its base is an entrance and also an exit to the Burgas uh, Stadthal subway station. The subway uh, in German is Untergrundbahn or U-Bahn for short and this Stadthal is the name of one of the stations in the subway system. So as soon as you get off the subway at the station you have ready access to the library. I am duly impressed. Okay and here not far south from the library, just like maybe, you know, steps south from that library that I just filmed, is The Loving Hut, a vegan cafe and restaurant. Awesome. No, I'm not getting paid to advertise them. I just thought the idea of a vegan cafe and restaurant here in Austria, here in Vienna, was pretty awesome. Okay, folks, so here's my plan. I am here outside the Westbahnhof railway station. Not to be confused with uh, that building over there. This building also will say Westbahnhof. You can't see it because it's on the... Uh, actually, I guess you can kind of see it. 
there on the entrance. Yeah. This building also, uh, it's also a Westbahnhof train station, but this is the subway station, as indicated by the U. The blue U logo is for the Untergrundbahn, the, uh, the U-Bahn, the underground subway system of Vienna. So that's the, uh, the subway station. But I'm not taking a subway train, I'm taking a regular above ground train. So for that you go to this station across the street. So here's what I'm doing. I'm going to uh, board a train here to Budapest, which uh, of course is the capital city and largest city in Hungary. Uh, the reason I'm going there well, first of all, it's because it's a nice city to visit, and I'd like to go there since it's close by. It's less than, uh, the train trip from here to Budapest is less than three hours, and the ticket costs about 40 euros, so it's an easy trip to make, so I should go to Budapest while I'm here. Secondly, also, I know somebody in Budapest who's actually going to meet me there. I have an internet friend in Budapest who I'm going to meet there, so that'll be nice to meet him in real life for the first time. So that's it. I think I'm done with Vienna for now. As you can see from that clock there, it's a bit past two in the almost 2:30 in the afternoon. So I've been walking around here, uh, around Vienna for about four hours now. So I think I'm done with Vienna for now. I'll probably uh, I'll come back. I'm not going to stay in Budapest for very long. I'll try to film some things in Budapest. I'm not going to be there for more than probably about a day. I'm not going to be there for very long at all. So I'll probably just have time to film maybe a couple of key landmarks somewhere downtown. I'll try to catch what I can, but I, like I said, I'm not going to be there for very long. I'm just going to meet my friend and then come back to Vienna. So that's it. I'm done with Vienna for now. Uh, I'll probably catch you folks a little bit later when I'm in Budapest. And then who knows where I'll go after that. All right, folks, take care. This is Late Blight signing off from Westbahnhof Railway Station in Vienna. Bye-bye for now.